this is my experience with the Ray One EMV and the Ray One Trifocal. So the Ray One EMV basically depends on extending range of vision by about one and a half diopters, and it's a non-diffractive IOL, and that's the benefit of the lens. So if you look at the optic design, it has an aspheric anterior surface, and this generates about plus 1.5 worth of reading vision. So you are left with about plus one. So you compensate that by putting the other eye minus one, or then you tell the patient that to read up small things, you still need to wear a plus one reading glass. So that's how the central region induces a controlled positive spherical aberration. So you can look in the slide, and the EMV is generating one and a half diopters of spherical aberration there. So this is the Rayner trifocal lens called the Ray One trifocal, and uh, it has the typical. Rayner design that we love for the last 20 years because this lens will not move once it's in the capsular bag, even if the bag contracts. Also, it has only 16 rings, and what's very important is that it's aberration neutral, and I'm going to get to that in a moment. So it's an aberration neutral aspheric optic, and this is what I wanted to bring out. So this is a very interesting slide. It shows that if you decenter the lens even by half a millimeter, or maximally one millimeter, which can happen in every patient. It's only the aberration neutral lens where the MTF is maintained. So person's vision is maintained only with this lens. With the other lenses, aberration negative or positive, it kind of plummets. So that's the effect of decentration and tilt on the image quality. So the aberration negative IOLs were very sensitive. And the Rayner trifocal has fewer rings on the optic because of which you get less glare at night. And what's also important is that this lens gets in very nicely through two millimeters. So if you see the comparison chart, what's important is it has 16 rings, it's aberration neutral, and it gets in through as small as two millimeters. So when we deal with patients, we have to decide which lens to put in the appropriate patient. The patient, however smart he is and thinks he's read Google, hasn't operated anyone and hasn't seen 40,000 other people, which I have. So I'm in a better position to decide. Now tell the patients this. The patients come to me and they say, I want this lens, so I want this lens. I said, you're not going to a Hyundai showroom to buy a car. Look, buddy, I've done more surgery than you, so listen to me. So these are the questions I ask them. How important is it to be, to be spectacle free versus how important is it to have perfect night and distance vision? And if the answer is, I want perfect night vision, they're never getting a diffractive lens. Do you drive or ride at night? I ask them. How much glare are you getting from your existing glasses? He said, if we're used to glare from my existing glasses, I would consider a trifocal. But if not, then I asked them, do you have glare now? They're okay with the glare, I would consider a trifocal. But if they don't have any glare, I would never put a trifocal and they only get an EMV. Are you happy wearing your progressive glasses? So people who are really happy wearing progressive glasses are good candidates for an EMV. Because if there is some residual reading power needed, they're okay with it. Do you have glare from oncoming headlights? Are you okay with that? So these are people who are glare adapted. They're used to having glare. They're okay with the trifocal. But if they've never had glare, and the first time the trifocal rings create that halo and it hits them, they're never going to be happy with that. If they perform adventure spy, uh, sports like this, if they're going to jump from planes and ride and bungee jump and stuff and river raft, they can't wear glasses. You can forget it. They're good trifocal or EMV candidates and not monofocal candidates. If they are surgeons, I would rather put in an EMV with monovision rather than a trifocal. If they are makeup artists, they always get trifocals because you don't do makeup at this distance, you don't make up at this distance. So you need good vision at 12 inches. Stockbrokers are okay with either. Age of the patient is very important. Out of a thousand trifocal lenses that I implant, 700 are not for cataracts. They were people who are 48 or 50 years old who don't want to wear glasses anymore. That's a large percentage of my practice where cataract surgery has become refractive surgery. So if they're less than 48 years old, I just refuse until the patient is a hyperope more than two diopters. If a person's emetropic and they're 47, I will never implant a lens. So they're always the happy hyperope is very important. If the person's hyperopic, they're always going to be happy. They're okay with trifocals, they're okay with the EMV. However, if you like to be sued or pestered and have endless visits at the clinic, then please operate someone who's minus one. I run away from people who are minus one, never operate them because they have better vision than what you can give them with a lens currently. So myope of minus one is a terrible candidate unless they have significant cataract and 
having significant cataract at 48 and being minus one is mutually incompatible. You're never going to get patients like that. If they've lost lots of vision, they're seeing really bad, then they'll be happy. Otherwise, never. If they have maculopathy, glaucoma, macular edema, you never put an EMV or a trifocal. Because even with the EMV, they're not going to get that perfect, precise focus. They need monofocals. I have tried this out in patients like that. They're never going to be happy. If they have moderate glaucoma with good fields and a little bit of diabetic retinopathy, I'd put an EMV, but never a trifocal. I would never put a trifocal in mild glaucoma, maculopathy, because things just get from bad to worse. They all get monofocals. A happy patient may hide that he's had any surgery and just walk around without glasses and not tell anyone, especially if they're in their 40s. They just look around and say, you know, Valley, I just don't have any glasses. I'm just perfect. However, one unhappy or under counsel patient is going to tell a hundred people that the doctor's choice of lens has ruined his life. Remember, they come with a the lens, they say, we want this lens, but then if it doesn't work, it's your choice. The patient forgets that he chose the lens. If everything goes well, the patient has chosen the lens. When things go wrong, you have chosen the lens. Now, this will be the reason for bad marriage, failure at work, depression, and suicidal thoughts. And this has happened to me. So use your sixth sense. If you have too many odd questions, if the spouses exchange too many funny looks, they're on the brink of divorce, they have taken multiple second, third, and fourth opinions from other doctors, either put in an EMV or a monofocal. Just don't go with a trifocal. After 25 years of practice, you should be able to predict who's going to be happy with a trifocal and who will not. Old folks, 60 or 65 and over, trifocal always works. They're too old to be divorced. They don't have any problems at home. And they're okay with things not being 100% okay. But tall men and tall women, if they're six feet tall, if they have long arms, EMB works great. But if you get a shorty who's five foot two, please put a trifocal. He's never going to be able to read with an EMV. I've put in over 500 EMVs and trifocals from other brands. I've put in thousands over 20 years of putting diffractive implants. So what I realize is, sometime or the other, one out of 10 people are going to be unhappy but everyone's happy with the EMV. It's a zero complaints lens. Aim for minus one in the non-dominant eye and that's it. I've put in lots of Rainers, Zeiss and Alcon Panoptics. I was the first person to put Zeiss trifocals in the country in 2014. Alcon and Zeiss have more glare at night. Rainer has less glare at night, but maybe just a little bit less near vision than the Alcon. So trifocals are applicable if the patient is okay with good or not fabulous near vision and wants less glare while driving, go with Rayner. If they say that we want to see perfectly at night, we don't want our color values to be affected, the guy's a jeweler and needs to look at color in diamonds, go, don't go with, a, with an Alcon lens because it has a tint. Let's have a look at the video. This is how I implant all my lenses. There's no viscoelastic in the eye. Viscoelastic is only in the injector. In goes the lens. It's important to be able to fit in through that 2.2. Because once I get in there, I want the lens to open in the capsular bag. And that's how I do it. So the lens is open in the capsular bag. That's the end of the story. There's no viscoelastic to wash out. And we are pretty much done. Thank you. So the Ray-1 EMV is a special lens because it doesn't have diffractive rings and it has spherical aberration, positive aberration. So it generates a little bit of intermediate vision and range. And if you put the other eye, minus one or minus 0.75, in most cases they don't need glasses anymore. This is a real advantage because it does away with dysphotopsia and people seeing rings and glare at night. So they can drive very well. They can see at intermediate distance. They can see their phone and their iPad. So it works great. So Ray-1 trifocal is different from other trifocal lenses because first of all, it's clear. The competition all has a yellow tinted lens, which I don't think is a great idea, even though they have their own studies to support that. The second thing is that it's aberration neutral. So it's not so sensitive to decentration. And remember, whenever you implant a lens, even though you may think it's centered in the capsular bag, the pupil's probably not at the exact same center. So you are going to have some decentration in every patient. And a lens that is not so sensitive to decentration, for example, the Rayner trifocal lens, will do better than the competition. 
that's one point I like to bring out is that the Rena injection system is fantastic and it gets in the eye through a 2 or 2.2 millimeter incision as well if not better than the competition. So that's very important because I like to inject my lenses without viscoelastic. So put viscoelastic in the injector and in goes the lens. So it has to fit right in the tunnel.